Okay, everybody. I'm trying something new today. I am, let's just say, I'm playing with the phone. I can't see myself, so I don't know if I'm in the center of the picture or not. Uh, if my people are on Slack, I'm trying, I put a post-it note up. They can Slack me on my iPhone i watch and tell me if i need to move one way or the other anyway i'm <laughs> today we're getting um november is menu planning month for all of us on fly lady and we've been doing it this way for a lot of years and we just want to help you get through the holidays with a plan and having your menus all done up for the month helps you to get your grocery shopping done more efficiently and kind of get some meals in the freezer so that you don't have to um, you don't have to worry about what's for dinner because we all hate that question especially if we're standing in front of our refrigerator at 6 p.m. opening up the doors not having a clue as to what we're gonna fix for dinner so I'm going to be demonstrating some things today and it's we've all got this stash in in our closets I know you do because I have it and I'm just like you I have a let me get it here I have some post-it notes little post-it notes and and the these little post-it notes are kind of cute because they're all different colors so I've taken them and I've cut one little edge off from it and cut just the sticky part off right here. Just the sticky part off. And I have a little pad of them that I can use to put on my calendar. And I've got, I've got my calendar right here. This is our handy dandy fly lady calendar. And I hopefully you can see that it says November and not backwards. That's why I've done this today. And, you know, having, being able to put your post-it notes at the bottom with your menu on it really helps to let the family know what's for dinner. And if you have the recipe posted on your refrigerator, then somebody can come in and start cooking for you if it's not already in your crock pot. So I have a funny story to tell you. I was telling Robert what the show was going to be about today. And he was... Um, he can be quite sarcastic and funny, sarcastically funny. And, and I love that about him because he keeps me laughing all the time. And I'm about to sneeze, everybody. Mm, look up. Anyway, so he, he said, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we had one of those car air fresheners that we could put up in our houses that smelt like dinner was cooking. And he, he he's funny because yesterday I cooked and today I'm cooking. And I don't cook often, so this is quite a, a fun thing for me. Uh, I haven't, um, haven't cooked in a while, but I can cook. And he says it's better to have a wife that can cook that doesn't cook often, that one that can't cook and cooks all the time. So I want to help teach you how to get your house smelling good without having to have one of those air fresheners going on. Now, yesterday I threw together a chicken pot pie. I had all the makings in my refrigerator to do this. I had some some chicken strips, pre-cut chicken strips in the in the freezer they got thawed up quite quickly because they were laid out flat and I had a bag of mixed vegetables I had a jar of uh, chicken bouillon stuff that I get from Amazon I have it for beef and chicken and I think I have it for um, vegetable and ham that I it's just flavoring that I help that helps me to make a gravy to put things in and I had everything I even had pie crust in the freezer 
And so I pulled together and put together this chicken pot pie. And I made two of them. Now, I gave one of them away yesterday because the vet came to check the dog. He has a sore paw, so y'all keep him. It's not a, it's not a paw. It's his, his wrist area. He's, it's all swollen up. So he's being, he's on some medication for the swelling and he's just chilling right now. But our vet is a neighbor and his wife hasn't been feeling well. So I just put together two of them. I put it all, I'd made it all the mixed vegetables. I fixed the gravy and I put the vegetables. I, I stirred the chicken around first and then I put the flavoring stuff and then some flour in the skillet and stirred it around and and then I added some uh, chicken broth to it and made this gravy through the mix. I put, also put some chopped up onion in it to give it some more flavor. And before I knew it, I had this big skillet full of stuff and I knew we couldn't eat all that. So I divided it up into two casseroles, small casserole dishes. And he took one home with him and we had the other one and we ate it all. You know, eating everything you fix is good unless you're going to take it for lunch tomorrow and you don't have any leftovers. But I like leftovers. That way I've got something for lunch tomorrow. Now, it, was, it didn't take long to throw it together. Probably 15 to 20 minutes to put it together. And then I put it in the casserole dishes and put it in the oven and started cooking it because I wanted it to be done by the time he got around to getting here to the house to check on the dog. And it worked. It worked. I got something, I got something in my mouth that's weird. Anyway, so that was yesterday's thing. I got a secret goal to not eat out this month. Can you believe that? I haven't told Robert yet because I might get hungry for something. But hey, I'm going to try it. And I'm going to try to eat out of our refrigerator and our freezer because we have a lot of things in the freezer. And those things don't last forever. And I'm going to try to cook out of the refrigerator and the freezer. And I love using my crock pot. I got a big pot of chili going right now. And this big pot of chili only cost me $3 for the pound of hamburger meat because Robert bought it yesterday. And I put two cans of Rotel in it. So that's $3 and that's $1.29 each. So that's, that's $5. And then a package of McCormick chili seasoning, which is another dollar and a half or so, maybe $2. And... For less than $10, and and uh, I've got a bag of cheddar cheese shreds to put on top of it and some sour cream already in the refrigerator. So I didn't have to buy those, but you do have to buy them, so they kind of include in the cost. So overall, I've got a meal that will probably feed us tonight, and it will feed us in the next few days for leftovers, or I can bag it up into two cup portions and freeze it and label it really well. That's one thing we do. We're we're not good about labeling the stuff we put in our fridge in our freezers or even in our refrigerators. Now, my grandmother always told me that when you throw any food away, you are wasting money. Wasting money. It's like throwing dollar bills down into the garbage can. So let's stop doing that. Let's use what we have. Let's cook what's in the refrigerator and then the freezer before it goes bad. And let's feed our families. It's just that simple. So I'm trying to see if anybody's sending me anything, but I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm going to pull up Slack on my phone to see if anybody sends me anything. Anyway, so that's where we have it for this month. And I'm really going to try hard to eat what we have on hand. I've got a lot of frozen vegetables. I've got a pantry that's stocked really well. Um, we just need some meals that are, are efficient 
and 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 that means that are easy to cook because not you don't don't always want to have a crock pot meal but sometimes it just keeps you out of the kitchen you get it started and pop it you know pop everything in the crock pot because today all I did was take the hamburger meat and I, and this is a pound of raw hamburger meat it was like 389 a pound and I it was less than a pound probably because it was only like three dollars and a quarter for the cost of the the package because I looked at it before I came in here and I poured the I chopped up an onion I had a half an onion left over from yesterday and it was a big onion so I chopped that onion up and then I tossed in uh, two cans of Rotel. We like our chili hot. So I put a hot can of Rotel and it called for salsa, but I didn't want to waste the salsa on the chili. So I just added another can of Rotel and that's just chopped tomatoes with hot peppers and stuff in it and dumped that in there and stirred it around with the raw hamburger meat. I didn't brown the hamburger meat. I didn't do any of that stuff. Because I like my meat in little tiny pieces, fine pieces. And Leanne taught me how to do this with her holiday um, recipes, the Thanksgiving stuff. And she poached, she taught me how to poach sausage. And you just put a little water with the sausage and, and cook it and it falls all to pieces into little tiny pieces. I like little tiny pieces. I don't like big hunks of meat. So this works well for me. Trying to find a Kleenex. I guess I need to get them closer to me, don't I? Anyway. I got something home. I guess I had lunch and I didn't brush my teeth afterwards. So here we go. Let's think about menu planning. You can't cook if you don't have anything in the house because by the time you run to the grocery store, you've probably spent 25 more dollars than you would have needed for dinner. You need a stocked pantry, you need a stocked freezer, you need a stocked refrigerator. You heard me? You heard it here and you've heard it from Leanne. We need these things in our, in our houses to be stocked and ready to go. When we don't have our, a stocked pantry and a stocked refrigerator and a stocked freezer, that's when we, we go through the drive throughs or we call for pizza again. And that's when we start feeling bad. Even though the kids love pizza, making their own pizzas at home is a fun thing to do. So let's talk about your basic weekly plan for menus. Let's just think about it just a little bit. What are some things that are tried and true things we like every week? Soup in the wintertime. I get, I get in soup mode. I like to have my soups. One of my favorite soups, which I'm not probably going to eat this year because I went a summer without ice cream. Now I'm going to go a winter without potatoes, but it's potato soup. And it's cheap. It is really inexpensive to make. And it's filling. And you add, I mean, where I grew up in, in western Tennessee, we had this wonderful restaurant called The Pier. And they served, this was in Sandburg, Tennessee, they served this potato soup. And it was to die for. And a friend of mine got me the recipe. And I have the recipe. But since I know what's in it, I never use the recipe. I just know how to cook it. And it's a really inexpensive soup. And it uses three types of potatoes. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, it uses mashed potatoes. It uses uh, shredded potatoes. And it uses little cubed red potatoes. And... It's got a, it's got a, you cook it without the cream in it. You got onions in it. You can use green onions. You can use just plain old onion, but they're chopped real fine. I mean, very fine. 
and you saute those around and then you in some butter because the butter makes it better butter always makes things better and you cook your potatoes in some chicken broth the little cubed ones you add some if you've got some le I like to do it when I have leftover mashed potatoes and then you take a potato and shred it and so you got little pieces of potatoes you got chunks of potatoes and I like little chunks of potatoes the it, it's an inexpensive recipe to cook the most expensive thing is the cream you pour in it at the last minute to make it this rich soup and then you whip up some cornbread and they always served it with some little pan fried pancake cornbread uh, fritters and this just oh you make up like pancake batter but you use cornmeal and you don't put any sugar in it and it is amazing mm -mm -mm. I'm hungry just thinking about it so let's sit down and let's pick a color you know I've got four colors of post-it notes right here I got purple I got blue I got yellow and I'm sure there's a lot of other colors and pink so let's just say um, blue is gonna be pizza Friday night's pizza night. Let's just pick a day that the kids like to have pizzas and that they have time to play and make pizzas. So let's think about what you got to have to make pizzas. Well, you can either buy pre-made dough or you can whip up your own dough in five minutes. There's all kinds of great recipes on the internet for pizza dough. It takes a little bit of yeast, some warm water, and some plain flour, and you got pizza dough. That's pretty much all there is. You need a pizza sauce. You can get that at the store so you don't have to make your own. And everybody on a pizza parchment paper, invest in a roll of parchment paper. You're going to love this stuff. It cuts down messes like you wouldn't believe. And with some cookie sheets, you can make pizzas, personal pizzas. So you need the flour and some yeast and water that's going on your grocery list. Uh, what do the kids like to eat on their pizzas? Do they like pepperoni or just plain cheese? What do you like on your pizzas? Do you like chopped peppers, chopped onions? Uh, I personally like pineapple and pepperoni, which people who are pizza connoisseurs think that's just terrible, but it's one of our favorite pizzas. But we also like hamburger and you know ground beef and peppers and onions we like italian sausage peppers and onions so figure out what it is your family wants to make and then everybody make their own pizzas and it can be a creative activity for your kids smash the dough around put you know make a little edge and you can even draw a circle on the paper so the kids get the dough in the right place and bam you you've made pizzas and they'll eat their own pizzas like crazy. They'll eat store-bought too, but this will be fun for them. And top it with some cheese and you're good to go. What a fun night for everybody. It might be a good thing to do on Saturday night after you had fun on, on family fun day. This can then have game night afterwards. So pick a color for pizzas and put that on your calendar. So I'm gonna write out pizza. P-I-Z-Z-A. And you can do it five times or you just do one, one, one week at a time and peel it off. See? And we're going to add it to our handy dandy calendar. I'm going to put it on Saturday. There you got it. Pizza. Now, what else do you like to have? Wednesday is always anti-procrastination day which is for us it's our day to clean out our refrigerator and with the holidays coming up we need to get our refrigerators pretty clean so what I want you to do if you didn't do it yesterday let's let's get some chicken thighs or some chicken legs or whatever you got in your freezer that needs to be used up and let's clean out our refrigerators now this is what Leanne calls surprise chicken 
and you take those little bits of things that are in jars like you got that much barbecue sauce I think I'll, I might cook this tomorrow you got this much barbecue sauce you may have a little bit of um, ranch dressing what else a little little bit of mayonnaise a little bit of uh, steak sauce a little bit of soy sauce you got all the maybe just a little bit of jam in a jar you got all these little things that are taking up room in your refrigerator well throw all those in your crock pot throw in some chicken thighs Robert calls them chicken figs chicken thighs and are some chicken legs or some chicken breast and I'm telling you you got surprise chicken you'll never make it the same way twice but it cleans out the refrigerator you get something cooking and the house is smelling wonderful and you you fed your family you put a salad with it and maybe uh, steam uh, stir fry some vegetables or um, broccoli I mean I love broccoli I love Brussels sprouts I heard a recipe for Brussels sprouts today that was just to die for you cut Brussels sprouts in half and put some prosciutto on them well I like to put bacon on mine flip them around with some um, olive oil stick them in the oven with some salt and pepper yum that just I love Brussels sprouts so you put some Brussels sprouts with the chicken and maybe you want uh, throw some potatoes you know bake a potato to go with it you got a whole meal and it's you cleaned out your refrigerator at the same time now another thing we can do when we clean out our refrigerator is start a pot of soup because we got these little smidges of vegetables well if I've got like this much lima beans left over I keep a plastic container in my freezer to put little pieces of of beef or you know if I've got a little piece of beef left from a roast I'll put that in there the gravy from the roast I'll put that in there any kind of gravy that's left over goes in there because that becomes the base for a vegetable soup and I keep frozen vegetables in my freezer all the time mixed vegetables that would go in the soup for the odd things that you know I don't have and I've always got potatoes and onions on hand in my pantry while they're sitting right out on the kitchen counter but it makes having my pantry stocked makes cooking so much easier and I'm trying to get Robert loves to go grocery shopping I hate to go grocery shopping so it's a team effort for us he goes and gets it and I put it all away so I know where it is and as I run out of something I add it to the grocery list so the next time he goes to the grocery store he gets that thing back in I like to have two things for backup so that there's plenty of time to go to the grocery store this month I'm gonna do my best to cook out of the refrigerator out of the freezer and out of our pantry the pantry may be bare by the time December gets here but we're gonna have fun doing it so what else is it that you like to cook that is a standard so we've got say say you have a soup and sandwich night let's see what color do we want to make that let's make that let's make that uh, pink soup we got soup here and and I'm gonna put that let's put that on Wednesday because that can be our our day to have a crock pot meal we'll put that on I wrote it on the wrong side that's a sticky side okay here we go we got soup on Wednesday see soup now Mondays and Sundays I like to cook sometimes on Sundays and make a bigger meal so let's say we want to do comfort food on a Sunday what is your idea of comfort food for me it's a pot roast you buy a, a pot roast about three 
to five pounds of pot roast. I like leftovers. Yep. Robert likes a tough pot roast. I want one falling off the bone. So I promised him the next time he gets one, I'll cook it the way he wants it. I'll take it out and slice it up the way he wants it. And then I'll finish cooking the rest of it. What goes in a pot roast? Well, potatoes, carrots, gravy. You got to have gravy. And I like to put a half a cabbage on top of mine, sliced in a wedge so that it stays together there toward the end. And so I've got a cabbage, potatoes, carrots, onions, gravy, and the pot roast. Oh, wow. And you may want to put a salad with it or rolls. Yum. But you have, have something you cook. And this can go in the crock pot too. But you have a big meal. And then you have leftovers. And we'll talk about the things you can do with the leftovers. So let's, comfort food is going to be yellow. Pot roast. So you write all those things down on what you want for, and see that's the day, next Sunday is daylight savings time. It's when we go off of daylight savings time. I just put the sticker over that. It's when daylight savings time ends, but we have to change our clocks before we go to bed on Saturday night. So you got pot roast. You got soup. Those are two things that can go in your crock pot and, and oh, make your house smell wonderful. Now, let me tell you the secret about pot roast. And this is what I taught Michelle a long time ago. Your pot roast is only as good as the gravy you put over it. Yep. So let's say you have um, some brown gravy mix in, in your spices drawer that you hadn't used. That brown gravy mix could make a great base for your pot roast. I like to make my own gravy and it, I brown my beef roast and then I make a gravy out of that. And I have this, this bouillon stuff that it comes in, it's, it's it like a, in a mayonnaise jar, but not that big. It's about that big. And I use that for flavoring, but it, it you can use soy sauce and Worcestershire sauce and all that stuff to make your gravy taste the way you like it to taste. You can use jarred sauce. You can use Lipton onion soup. There's lots of ways to make your roast taste wonderful. Pour the gravy over it. Put it in the crock pot with the onions. I like to slice onions in wedges because I like a meaty onion in my gravy. And... It's, it's wonderful. It is absolutely, makes the house smell good. You fed your family. And here's what you can do with the leftovers. Now, Leanne taught us about um, rubber chicken. Well, I got rubber beef roast. So you feed your family and you got a little bit of beef roast left. It's Maybe it's enough for an open face sandwiches and you make some mashed potatoes to go with that. And you still got that gravy. You just put it on the put it on the hoagie roll and put the meat on there, cover it in gravy, and you got mashed potatoes. Yum. That's another meal you can have that day. You could probably have that for, for your soup and sandwich day too. But you take the leftovers from that. This is why I cook a big beef roast. When you cook a big one, you got leftovers. When you take that beef roast and you make the open face sandwiches, then you can chop up the rest of it into little pieces and throw together a vegetable soup or a beef stew even. I know I noticed Liz is having beef stew tonight for dinner. Yum. But when you make it from leftovers, it's already cooked. You cut up the potatoes and carrots that were left over, throw the gravy on top of it, and you got this wonderful beef beef roast, um, um, beef stew to feed your family. And I like Oh, yum. Mm. I'm getting hungry and I'm smelling everything that's cooking in the kitchen. So let's, what are some other mainstays? Let's, let's pick a color for leftovers. Let's use purple for leftovers and everybody kind of fend for themselves night. Let's pick a day for leftovers. I didn't write it too well, but hey, it's my calendar. I'm the only one that's going to see it. 
Now, the problem is you have to leave a little lip left so you can, can pull it apart. And let's say Thursday night is leftover night. You're trying to get rid of stuff out of the refrigerator because so, you're going to go grocery shopping Friday or Saturday. So let's use up our leftovers. And what's left over in the refrigerator can go in into your little um, little thing for um, for your soup mix. I'm moving the pizza thing over to, to Saturday. Now Friday... You might want to try some special recipe. You know, something you haven't cooked in a while that you can start in the morning and get home. Maybe it's a maybe it's a fast recipe. Let me let me give you some of my tried and true fast recipes. One of my favorite meals in the whole wide world is spaghetti carbonara. Now, this is a quickie meal. And it takes as long to cook as it takes you to boil the spaghetti. And according to how many people you have in the house, you know how much, um, how much spaghetti you got to cook. So you got that about that much is for one person of dried spaghetti. So if you got five people, you probably want to get about that, that much of spaghetti cooking. And you want to take probably five eggs, I like to do one per person and I ha have, I like to fry up some bacon, but I have bacon crumbles in my freezer so that I've fried up and I've frozen. So I have some leftover bacon and you can use ham, you can use bacon. There's just lots of things. I don't like onion in this, but I do like English peas, those little tiny green peas, the round ones. And I parmesan cheese and I like a nice fresh parmesan cheese but if I don't have it I'll use the bottled kind and you whip up the eggs you add some real cream to the eggs and some parmesan cream parmesan cheese to the egg mixture and you throw in the peas and the bacon and beat it all up and then you add a little bit of the water from the spaghetti to the mixture and stir it up and then you drain the spaghetti and the don't rinse the spaghetti you don't want to rinse the spaghetti and then you pour all of that over the spaghetti and you got spaghetti carbonara and you stir it around the eggs will cook the spaghetti will cook the eggs it makes a thick nice sauce and if you want to put it over a little more heat you can put it on a low heat and stir it around it is wonderful. And then serve it with some garlic bread. And that's all you need. It's all you need. And it's inexpensive. You've used five eggs, some cream, some bacon, and you're good to go. And Parmesan cheese, that's all you got to have. And spaghetti. So I buy the spaghetti by the crate, even though I'm not eating it right now. Every Once a month, I'll have a little bit of pasta. But that's it. So pasta carbonara, fast, quick meal, and everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. Another tried and true happy recipe that I raised Justin on is hamburger helper, but it's not hamburger helper. You take a pound of ground beef and you brown it with some onion. We've all done it in a skillet. And to that ground beef, you got a pot of water going with noodles in it, wide egg noodles. This, this takes as long as it takes to cook the noodles to cook this. So you brown the hamburger with the onions. You add a can of, and according to the size of your family, add a can of Campbell's Golden Mushroom Soup. It's a brown, rich soup with sliced mushrooms in it. And to that, you can add a tub of, after that all mixed together and gets hot, you can add a tub of sour cream if you've got it, or an eight ounce package of cream cheese. 
either one works, works well. And then put the noodles in it and stir it around and put Parmesan cheese on it. And that's another quick meal for you to have. So let's come up with a, a code for a, a quickie meal. Let's see, we've done pink, we've done all the colors now. I've run out of colors. So let's see, leftovers is purple. We're gonna do purple for the quickie meals too. Quick meal. Q U I C K quick. It's having a pantry. It's half the battle. Having a pantry. Now you may want to use these quick meals for look at this, it's all coming together. Next week's practically done. Because we got a basic weekly plan to it. Now another thing people like to cook and cook all it's the first thing I ever learned how to cook was spaghetti with a meat sauce. You might not want pasta twice in one week, but hey, spaghetti is a family favorite. But you could also utilize um, and make lasagna, other things, not just plain old spaghetti. But it's the same type of sauce. You just got a different type of noodle and, and you spread it around. Sometimes you can put spaghetti sauce over mac and cheese, it may, not mac and cheese, but macaroni noodles. And I grew up with that. With it, We used canned tomatoes and hamburgers, and it was more like a tomato mixture. It was just one of those comfort foods in our house. Everybody's got their favorite comfort food. So figure out when it is. Your, your basic weekly plan can, for, for meal planning can go lots of different ways. Let's just think about Mexican. Yum. You got Mexican, Italian, you got Chinese food, you got American food, whatever other types that Robert likes Indian curry. And sometimes I'll do that uh, for special occasions. One year we had it for Thanksgiving. Can you believe that? I cooked curry for Thanksgiving. Well, his birthday, I usually do it on his birthday, and his birthday is this month. So I'll probably do chicken curry for his birthday. But you have, you know, a special meal you like to cook. And you got to get that stuff in the house so that you can cook that meal. These, these simple little recipes and the plans, you know, our taste buds like to be tickled. And tickling our Facebook buds... Uh, taste buds, I'm, I'm, I'm tongue-tied right now, tickling our taste buds gives a little variety to our meals. Now, let me give you some tips here. You could have Mexican one day and Chinese another day and curry on Friday, you know? So you could come up with lots of different ways to, to feed your family that's not going to be bored. They're not going to be bored with the food. And then you can throw in the comfort food and utilize all the leftovers and make a soup. And you've gone through the whole week. You know, Chinese, American, Mexican. Look at what you've done. You can have barbecue one day. You can just kind of change it up and have a basic weekly plan. You can Another way to have a, a basic weekly plan to your menu planning is you have beef one day, chicken another day, vegetarian another day, and um, maybe pork a, one day, and a pasta day, and a casserole day, and pizza. Look at that. Seven days in a week. You've done it. And once a week, you could have the soup and sandwiches. Maybe you have a burger. One Instead of just soup with it, you have a burger and a salad you just you got to mix it up but with the post-it notes with the post-it notes when you get through with it all you got to do is move it to the next day look here you just move it down you just move it right on down to the next day because it's sticky how cool is that 
this idea we got from a fly baby and it makes it colorful and it makes it nice and neat and you can just move it to the next week or move it three weeks down so you don't get bored how many ways can you cook hamburger there's meatloaf there's uh, spaghetti sauce I mean hamburger you can get in big packages and pre-cook it if you need to I like to do it in a crock pot I add a little bit of water to it sometimes I add two or three onions to a big five pound package and I cook it all up and stir it around with this water in it it gets little bitty pieces and the best investment I ever bought was one of those seal a meal things where you vacuum seal the hamburger meat so I drain it bag it up into two cup packages because it's just me and Robert and make them flat and vacuum seal it and date it big sharpie on it I can put up enough hamburger meat for a whole month if I need to that way and then I've got it pre-cooked which makes it much easier to cook something because I've pre-cooked this hamburger meat I have one drawer in my freezer upstairs that's beside my refrigerator that I just keep hamburger meat in pre-cooked ready to go now you can take some of that hamburger meat and pre-make meatloaves and do the same thing with them bag them up but then they need to be fully cooked and that's okay because sometimes you're home during the day on the weekends and you can pre-cook the meat you can cook the meatloaves and have you it's you're going to love menu planning when you think about it and have fun get sit your family around the dinner table and think about what meals are their favorites put it on note cards so that you have everything on a note card and then you can transfer it to post-it notes to go on your calendar or even just cut take a sheet of paper and divide it into five weeks with a header for the days of Monday through you know Sunday through Saturday and this is what I did when Justin was growing up we talked about it this morning I had five weeks of menus and you know it went from uh, if I'm trying to think about it a pot roast one one week and I utilized all the leftovers it's just a family of three and then there was um, roast chicken another week there was a pork roast with uh, that I turned into barbecue another week and then I had a veggie week where we would you know have some of our things from the gardens and, and um, a piece of ham I'd cook a ham and, and that's four weeks there you know you do yum that's all I can say cooking for your family is is going to make them healthier it's going to make you feel less guilty about ordering up fast food the way we have been in the fast it's going to save you money you just don't know how much it costs to go out and eat for a family of four it, it's expensive and eating out takes a lot of time like last night we didn't go out to eat I had dinner on the table at six o'clock we were finished by 6 30 and home, we didn't have to come home usually it's 7 7 15 by the time we get home everything was ready to go so we could watch the World Series uh, you know just good to go so having standard recipes that you cook often but having the stuff in the house to do that with and you know I that hamburger meat I put in the freezer I use for making casserole a Mexican casserole everybody loves that stuff layer it with tortillas and taco chips on top and you know all kinds of fun stuff that way you are feeding your family and having a great time let's go okay got 15 more minutes so what else is there to know about menu planning trying to think getting the groceries I used to only grocery shop once every two weeks and people don't know how you can do that but once you get used to it and have a stocked pantry you can actually pull that off 
and I have backup stuff in my pantry. I have um, freeze-dried sour cream mix. It's just a little container. But when you need some sour cream and you don't have any sour cream, I got backup. I've got backup powdered milk. My pantry's just totally stocked with the things. I have dried mushrooms. Yum. You can you can pull together a, a, a mushroom soup or add these dried mushrooms to things. I have dried onions. I have dried garlic. So I freeze dried gar garlic. So you just add uh, some hot water to it and it just puffs right up and you've got fresh garlic. So I, my spice drawer is stocked. My pantry is stocked. My uh, condiments are stocked, ready to go. I have olive oil. I buy butter. Uh, 20 pounds at a time and keep it in the crisper drawer. I don't put I don't put vegetables in the crisper drawers because they become slime drawers. So I use up my vegetables and they're on the bottom shelf in my refrigerator but they're not in a drawer hidden. You know, out of sight, out of mind. And if you put your menu plan on your refrigerator you might actually get some help from your family. I mean, let's think about cooking now for the month of November. Every time we make a meal, we kind of double up on it so that we've got extra to go in the refrigerator so you can make that same meal in December without having to spend any money. Think of, wouldn't that be fun? So let's use up the stuff we have in our freezers, in our refrigerators, and, and, Let's feed our families without going out to eat this month. I'm going to do my best to do this. I'm not going to promise it because that would be perfectionistic. But I'm going to work toward having a menu plan and actually cooking every night for the month of November. I'm two for two and this can be fun. Now, let me end this, end this show by thinking about um, the holiday missions. I got an email, and this will be tomorrow's Ask Fly Lady question. I got an email about, um, I'm behind already. No, you are not behind. You're not behind because we have a basic weekly plan to our holiday missions. Download the free holiday control journal. It's free. It's for you to play with. I watched a cute video today of um, a lady who, who kind of just made her own holiday control journal. And all she did was take a little tiny notebook and she knew what she had to plan. Now, I ask every question in the world you could possibly think of when it comes to getting ready for Christmas and New Year's and Thanksgiving. It's all right here. That's why we call it a holiday control journal. It's everything you could possibly need to, to, to know the answer to. Are you traveling for Thanksgiving? Are you traveling for Christmas? Is the car serviced? I've thought of every question for you. And then once you get, you know what the plan is, you're good. You can schedule your car maintenance if you've got a long way to drive. Justin and Emily usually have a long way to drive on Thanksgiving because they go to West Tennessee. I don't know that, you know, it's it's going to be fun. Whatever happens, I have we have Robert's family over, and Michelle and Brian usually come over. So I love Thanksgiving. It's my time to shine. So download the Holiday Control Journal. But if you're worried about being behind because tomorrow is the fifteenth mission that we've given out. But here's the basic weekly plan to the missions. Monday, we clean and fling some stuff. So let's get rid of children's toys. Let's get rid of papers that are sitting out on every flat surface in our homes. Let's, you know, let's clean and fling stuff. Tuesday is plan and play. That's when I want you writing in your, in your holiday control journal, thinking about what you're going to do and the presents you're going to buy, and all this stuff. Then uh, Wednesday is always anti-procrastination day. So what do you procrastinate most about during the holidays? 
filling out Christmas cards and mailing them, addressing them and mailing them, wrapping presents, uh, getting rid of old Christmas ornaments and those things. These are the things we do on Anti-Procrastination Day. You know what you've been putting off. Maybe you've been putting off placing that order you needed to place for your grandmother's fruit, you know, fruit of the month club or whatever it is that you do for, for them. I like clutter-free gifts. Clutter-free gifts are wonderful. Now, Thursday is always our errand day. And if you're having, you know, like soup and sandwiches and leftovers, there's not a whole lot of stuff you have to do. Everybody's kind of on their own that day. You can go and do some, get some shopping done. Or you can go online and get some shopping done. You can get those things coming to the house that you need. Place those orders and get them here. Because they'll come right to your door with it. Then Friday is look at our budgets. We don't want to overspend this Christmas. It has hurt us in the past and let's not do it anymore. Let's, let's stay within our budget. And that's what eating out of refrigerators and freezers is all about this, this November. It's freeing up some money to be able to to have a debt-free Christmas. Wouldn't that be fun? Come January, you know I have to pay for it. Think about it. Stay within your budget. Budget don't begrudge it is Fridays. So just do some little, little things every day to get ready for Christmas. It'll make your life calm. It, it'll keep you from having a migraine like this poor girl had uh, that I watched a video of. I think I'll get uh, get Rebecca to uh, show show it this weekend when she does a sneak peek. But it was a cute video, but she was under so much stress trying to be the perfect hostess, the perfect daughter-in-law, the perfect wife, and all she did was make herself sick. And she had an ocular migraine. Imagine that. I've never had a headache that bad, but her, her vision just closed in and she couldn't see. That's rough when you're trying to get out the door to go to, you know, go to somebody's house for Thanksgiving. That's tough. I don't want you stressing out this Christmas. I, I want you to, and Thanksgiving and New Year's, I want you to enjoy the process, have fun with it. Pace yourself and not get so stressed out that you have to go to bed. That's not fun. That, that ruins it for everybody, especially for you. Because they're in a party without you. That's just how it is. So spend a few minutes every day thinking about the holidays. Some little something. Go through your holiday control journal. Answer some of the questions. Make some appointments. Think about how you're going to decorate. Get rid of some stuff and check that budget. You're going to be glad you did. And look at your menus for this week. Think of how many things you make with hamburger meat and how much hamburger meat you need for each meal. You can buy that in bulk, pre-cook it in your crock pot and bag it all up. Wow. And some people use it so fast that they just leave it in a container in their refrigerator. But you, you can freeze it too because it, it just takes a moment for it to thaw up. And you can put it in the sauces and in the casseroles and the different things. Think about how much hamburger meat you use in a month's time. You could probably buy all your hamburger meat at one time. And once you get this stuff in your freezers, and you probably have hamburger meat in your freezer right now. <laughs> okay, let's go on a scavenger hunt. And, and let's look at our freezers and see how many meals we can cook from our freezers. This is going to help us to be able to save a lot of money and quit throwing those dollar bills down the trash can 
or down the garbage disposal. You're going to save money. You're going to be happy because you've planned these meals and your family's eating well and you might even lose a little weight. Who knows? Well, I've run my mouth too a lot today. I don't know how it looked. I can't wait to see if I if it looks okay on camera look, showing it this way, but I that that video I watched this morning, she did the same thing and I thought, "Well, that's a great idea." So, I learned something today watching her little video and we'll send it out so y'all can all see it. I'll get Liz to post it. It, you know, there's no this is the one thing I want you to remember. There's no perfect way to fly, to do fly lady. Even when you do it wrong and there's no wrong way, you're still doing something. It's all about adapting to fit your family. It's all about letting go of the perfectionism. And that's my one wish for you this holiday season. It's you will let go of your perfectionism and pace yourself. Because when you do that, you're not going to be stressed out on the inside. You're going to feel good about how your house is looking. You're going to know that what you've done is wonderful. And you can plan to have some fun in December. You know, make those gingerbread houses. Oh, here's another good tip. All that, ha all that Halloween candy you got in the house, use them for bricks. Um, Pam Young taught me this. Use them to make bricks for gingerbread houses. <laughs> yep. You can get rid of some of the, the Halloween candy by covering it up with icing and making gingerbread houses. Have some fun. That's what we're going to do in December. We're going to prepare this month of November and everything's going to be wonderful. You're going to be the hostess with the mostest and then you're going to be able to have fun in December and not be so stressed out. Mini Planet's going to help you accomplish that. I love you all. I'll see you next week. And I don't know how to turn this off. This is going to be weird. I'm trying to think where the where it is on the screen. Okay. See you later. Bye.